Hello YouTube, Salivate Metal here, and welcome one and all as members of the Salivation Nation. And most of you are aware of the usdebtclock.org website, but we're taking a look at a different portion of the website that showcases um, statistics on precious metals. First of all, by gold holdings by country in ounces, world precious metals production for 2017, production change since 2000, and then the precious metal reserves. Also, as part of this portion, we have uh, some statistics on the monetary base, uh, M2 money supply, and currency and credit derivatives since 2000. And we also have some interesting numbers here on the dollar to silver ratio and the dollar to gold ratio. So quite fascinating indeed, uh, the portions of this website. And most of you are aware of the main portion that shows the U.S. national debt. And uh, certainly some of that has some ties to some of these numbers here. But it also, this gives us some measure of the economy to a point as well. Especially seeing some of the, the changes in production since uh, 2000. But let's start off with the gold holdings by country in ounces. The United States is still on top with 287.5 million ounces. Uh, quite a lot of gold there. And then Germany's in second place there with 118.9 million ounces. The International Monetary Fund is third place. And you can see the numbers there as they go down. Switzerland is in the game there. We saw from the map in the prior video how, how much they um, um, value gold there and, uh, and have a, quite a store, especially per citizen there. The euro is in last place with the European Union having 17.8 million ounces. So quite interesting and indeed to see the United States still on top, although some people to this day question um, uh, our gold holdings. There hasn't been an audit of the federal of the of Fort Knox facility since 1974, and some people believe that that audit was fraudulent. Um, and I think there is a way, especially in these days, for them to actually prove they have the gold. I know that um, Ed Moy, the former U.S. Mint director, has actually seen the gold, and I believe him. I believe it's there. I just think that they're they're um, they should you know open up the vault and uh, allow the media in there and have some assays on done on some of the bars and the like. I just think it's good to know if they give the citizens 100% confidence that we have all of this gold. And obviously it's not just in Fort Knox. We have it in New York under the Federal Reserve. We have it in West Point and other places. And obviously there's gold that is allocated for uh, precious metals coins from the United States Mint. <clears throat> So with that being said, moving ahead to the world precious metals production for 2017, we can see here that um, these numbers here for gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, and then we have lithium and nickel, titanium, zinc, manganese, copper, aluminum, and iron. And all of these are important uh, to um, analyze here because silver is a byproduct of many of these, of mining of zinc. Aluminum, I think, you know, iron, maybe some of these other metals, nickel. And we can see the production change since 2000. And every single metal is up substantially, with iron being on top. And the reason why iron is on top is because of the use of steel for everything from automobiles and especially in Asia. There's been an explosion of automobiles in Asia, especially China. And there's also been a skyscraper boom. In, uh, since the year 2000 in China, in Dubai, and in New York, uh, United States, as well as London and other uh, European cities, um, and in the Middle East. So that's why you're seeing a lot of the iron production up. Aluminum is, is up, and manganese is up. Nickel is up substantially. Lithium is way up there, and that's for probably batteries from drones to Tele for cell phones and the like, all these other precious metals, or all these other metals, uh, rather, have a play uh, or a use in so many different things with uh, industry and technology, including silver. We can see that copper and uh, silver have the same increases since 2000. And a lot of that is due to the their, its use in industrial um, applications and the biomedical field. 
Cyber Curtain Twitcher sent me an email uh, with a link to a product that purifies water using silver. So silver is quite uh, common in using in the PV, uh, solar panels and the like, and other things. I, mean, the bio, I think the biomedical field is one of the most fascinating uses for silver. So we see that production increasing indeed. Palladium and gold are the, have the least highest increases. Um, and I think that's just because we're, um, in the, they're rare. And, uh, and, and, but platinum is the least that has grown um, over, the, over this period. And it is the rarest of the metals that we see here. But, um, or it's hard, you know, as far as pulling it out of the ground, it's much tougher to pull platinum out of the ground than it is um, gold or silver. But nonetheless, platinum is below gold right now in price. And gold, uh, to think this lower number of increased production change since 2000, tells us something that gold is rare and also it is treasured. And uh, there's also, because of its price, there is a little uh, demand for it. Um, it's not economically viable to use it in industry, although it does have some industrial uses and is still being used in industry, but not as much. Platinum is being uh, outweighed by palladium as far as industrial use because palladium has a much has, is a cheaper metal, at least for now, and it's not that much cheaper. It's catching up very quickly with uh, platinum. And, uh, of course, with the Palladium Eagles getting ready to come out from the United States Mint in September, you know, the uh, people are wondering, well, maybe I should wait, because I have a feeling if, if a Palladium comes in with comes within 50 or $25 of Platinum, or it comes even with Platinum or increases in Platinum, then Platinum will start to be mined more, possibly, and uh, maybe being used more. I think that platinum will go up. Palladium, there may be a, a price war between platinum and palladium. So these numbers are quite fascinating to see that palladium has been mined double the amount of, of uh, platinum. Palladium has been mined uh, twice as much more production of palladium than platinum since uh, in the last 17 years here. These precious metal reserves are quite interesting indeed. And, um, you know, it's 1.905 uh, billion, I guess, one ounce is there. 19,539,000,000 ounces of, uh, sil of, of silver there. And I guess that the, the, the culmination of all these numbers is my guess for gold and uh, around the world, the reserves around the world for all these metals. Very interesting indeed. Look at how much lithium is reserved. I don't understand that, how... Nations are have these in reserve. It's kind of strange. I don't know how that really works or if maybe if I'm interpreting that incorrectly, but 493 billion um, ounces of uh, lithium. Wow. A nickel, this, the nickel number is tons. Uh, and maybe all these other metals are in tons here down below. So quite interesting indeed. But look how much iron production, again, has increased there. So quite fascinating indeed. The monetary base changed since 2000. Look at that. It's up 531.73% since 2000. Insane. The M2 money supply changed since 2000. is 180.28%. And look at this. The currency and credit derivative changed since 2000 is a staggering 485.5%. But this, this here is quite interesting and fascinating. I think this thing puts it all into perspective and why it's uh, it's so va it's so um, it's such a smart move, in my opinion, to acquire the precious metals. And that is the dollar to silver ratio. In 1913, uh, when the Federal Reserve Act uh, was created and signed into law, there it, the dollar to silver ratio was two dollars and sixty five cents per ounce. And now there are $771 bills out there per ounce of silver. Wow. Crazy. Then the dollar to gold ratio in 1913 was $29.07 per ounce. And I believe that the government bought back uh, 
gold at $26 semi per ounce uh, when they uh, confiscated it in 1933. Uh, but nonetheless, look at that. $29.07 per ounce in 1913, and now the dollar to gold ratio is $6,355 bill per ounce of gold nowadays. And it does not mean that, you know, that that gold is going to be $6,355 per ounce. That just tells you the number of dollar bills that are out there or, or dollars that are out there either digitized or printed that there are per ounce of gold. And as you can see, back in 1913, uh, it was more realistic to the actual price of gold and silver uh, because that was when our money was backed by gold. Uh, look where we're at today. The twenty trillion dollars in debt and this huge derivatives and the like, it's no wonder. So post your thoughts below. Quite an interesting information here on the US debt uh, clock.org website. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching. I encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.